welcome to our uh, monthly meeting for the North of 60, and we're glad that you could join us today. Let me tell you what uh, today is going to look like. Uh, just in a few days here, we're going to celebrate uh, Father's Day, and so we want to do that uh, here this morning. And so the first thing I'm going to do here in a minute after a couple of announcements is to pray with us, and then we're going to hear a song, Precious Memories, and then my wife is going to do a devotional today regarding fathers and grandfathers, and that'll be an inspiration. Another song, and then I just want to tell you, we're going to do a quiz today, and so let me tell you what the quiz is going to look like. I'm going to actually send it out while my wife is speaking, near the end of that, and what I'd like you to do, it's uh, 12 questions that have to do with uh, fathers in the Bible. And so I'd like you, if you would do that, you're going to look at those and answer those questions, and the first one to get it back to us uh, will be appreciative. And uh, if you get a, a good grade on that, uh, we would encourage you to try and do it without the Bible. But if you have to go to the Bible or go to Google, do that, and there will be a prize. So you have a choice of uh, the Courageous video. You may have seen it, but you don't have it in your possession. There you are. Uh, the next one is Fireproof, a uh, Fireproof, and uh, that is up for grabs too if you win this little quiz. And the third one, which would be my uh, favorite, I think we have an extra one of these, War Room. It's an excellent movie, so you get to win that. So on the screen, uh, you're going to see this a little bit later on, my email address, pastor, and this is all lowercase, pastor, P-A-S-T-O-R, period, Larry, at W-B-I-C.ca. That'll be up on the screen. Send your answers back, and uh, we'll see who wins this, and I hope we have fun with that on Father's Day. So let me... I pray us in, and we're going to listen to this uh, good old song, Precious Memories, that Sharon will sing for us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity today to share with our North of 60 group. Father, there's a lot of um, pain out there, a lot of loneliness and anxiety and fear. But I pray even as a result of just taking these moments to focus on memories, precious memories of God's grace, our parents, and especially fathers today, we pray your uh, spirit would just touch our hearts together. And most of all, we thank you for our Heavenly Father who is with us today. So I pray your anointing as we listen to a couple songs here this morning. And then as Sharon shares in the word, we pray that you'll touch her heart and may this touch our hearts together. So we want you to be glorified, touch our people today, make this a wonderful day as we celebrate fathers and as we thank you especially for our Heavenly Father who is with us today. We worship you, we give you thanks and praise in his holy name. Amen. Thank you. 
Good morning and happy Father's Day to all our fathers who are listening today. We just want to, I just want to use a, a modern day slogan that has become very popular in the media, in the social media, and that is, Fathers Matter. You matter, fathers. And uh, we're very thankful for all of our fathers in our, <clears throat> in our church. And um, I just want to say that uh, according to statistics, fathers matter in the home. Fathers matter in a child's life and father figures as well. And so it shows, statistics show that fathers uh, who are either in the home or out of the home have a strong influence on the decisions that their, their sons make, especially their sons, and, and the high statistics show that, that the son follows in the father's footsteps no matter where the father leads. <clears throat> and I don't think that means um, vocationally necessarily, but in the uh, life choices that a father makes. So today, as we think about Father's Day, you may be thinking about your father and what he meant to you. You will have memories of your father. We all have memories. If we had a father, we all have memories of our father or a father figure. And sometimes those memories can be very precious and other times they can be very, very painful. And sometimes they can be a little bit of both. You may be thinking today about yourself as a father, which is a good thing to do, or perhaps a grandfather. But I, I restate, fathers matter. And um, I'd like to share with you today uh, the admonition from uh, the Word of the Lord, and it's called the Armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand, take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. This is a good admonition whether you are a, uh, a father or a grandfather or you're not a father at all, a follower of Christ. It's good for all of us to, to follow this admonition because that's exactly what we need to do. <clears throat> now today as you think about your father, I want, to, I want to ask you a couple questions. And that is, um, what would you say was your father's greatest strength? What would you say was your father's greatest strength? What would you say was your father's or father figure? What was their greatest weakness? Those of you that spend time in the Word and reading the Word and studying the Word, you know that many of the fathers of the Bible were not perfect fathers. They may have been good fathers, they may have been terrible fathers, but they certainly were not perfect fathers. They all had failures, they all had weaknesses. Well, maybe they all didn't, but most of them did. And so as we look at the, the uh, fathers of the Bible today, just to gain some lessons and insights, um, I'm going to start with three 
of fathers who I consider to be good fathers, and maybe in some instances great fathers. The first one I'm, I'm going to talk about is Noah. I'm not going to read the scripture on each one. I'm going to leave that up to you to do it for yourself. But it's Hebrews 11, 7 talks about Noah, and Genesis chapter 6. And we're going to look at the strengths of Noah and weaknesses. And so here's the strengths. He lived for God. Even though there were many wicked people around him, he was a good example to his children. He did not go the ways of the world. He followed God. He obeyed God in spite of those who mocked him and ridiculed him. What God told him to do, he did it. He was also faithful to preach the truth and warn the people to repent. Even while he was building the ark as a way of protecting his family and whoever else would come on with them, he preached the word, the truth, and called the people to repentance. Another strength was he taught his children the ways of God by word and by example. In the account of Noah's life, we see only obedience from his children and no rebellion. This shows that his children respected him and honored him. So Noah must have done some things right as a father. And lastly, my, one of the observations that I took was that Noah had only one wife, which was at least one wife at a time, which was God's ideal uh, as he only uh, prepared or created one man and one woman. What was Noah's weakness? Well, some state that his weakness was <clears throat> that he got drunk once and he lay naked in his tent and exposed himself to anyone who came into the tent. But I uh, have read some different uh, ideas and some scholars say that uh, the that before the, um, the flood, the temperature was even keel. It didn't get exceed exceedingly hot and it didn't get exceedingly cold. There was no ice age. After the flood, the ice age came. And that's what a Christian scientists have stated. And so Noah probably had no idea that grape juice, which uh, they probably prepared before the flood, that it would, uh, with hot, hot weather, ferment. So I'm going to give him that uh, benefit of the doubt and uh, say that that was a hard lesson that Noah learned. And, uh, but as to as a weakness in him, I think it was more a lack of, of knowledge. So we're going to move on. The next one I'd like to talk about is Jesse. Jesse is found in uh, Ruth 4, 17 to 22 because he was Boaz and Ruth's grandson. His father was Obed. And then you can find more about him in 1 Samuel 16 to 17. Uh, he was King David's father. His strengths were, there is no favoritism among his children. We do not see in any, er in any way where there was favoritism among his children. He taught his sons to be loyal to the king and to fight for their nation. He cared for his sons even when uh, they went off to war. You remember that he sent David. That's how David and Goliath's story came about. He sent David with some cheese and some other uh, uh, food to uh, his older brothers. Uh, Jesse taught his son about taught his sons about the God of Israel, and we see that in David's account that David was taught. And so I'm assuming from that that he taught all of his sons about the God of Israel. His weakness, I don't know, because it is not revealed. We don't know enough about his life to know what weaknesses he had, but it, it appears he had a lot of strength. So that's Jesse. The next one um, I would like to talk about is um, Joseph. Joseph, uh, which was Jesus' stepfather. And uh, we find an account of him in John 19, Luke 2, and Matthew 1. That's John 19, Luke 2, and Matthew 1. Okay, so what are the strengths of Jesus, the step, uh, excuse me, Joseph, the stepfather of Jesus? First of all, he was a man of integrity who must have 
uh, honored God uh, because God chose him to raise his begotten son. And uh, you might say, well, you know, if my father-in-law was God, I might walk the line pretty straight too. But uh, I would like to say that God chose this man to be the stepdad of his son. And that speaks volumes about Joseph as a person and his integrity and even his loyalty to God. Joseph would not have Mary stoned when he found out that she was pregnant. He was going to put her away quietly, whatever that means. He was going to not stone her, but I guess send her away so that she could have the baby. This was before the angels revealed the truth to him. And when the truth was exposed, he, like Mary, accepted God's plan for them and followed suit. He raised Jesus to use the same tools that he used, but also he made sure that Jesus uh, studied the rabbinical law. <clears throat> he honored his God and his wife. He did not have sex with Mary until after Jesus was born. Now this, some of this may have to do with culture, I don't know. Or it may have, have had to do with totally his honoring God and uh, the son that he was left in charge to raise. As I said, Jesus was also trained in the rabbinical law, which Joseph would have had a part in that, to seeing that was done. And there is no indication that he showed favoritism of one child over another. We don't see any indication of jealousy or of anger from, the, from his other sons. And so uh, that says a lot about him too. His weakness was not in character, but his weakness was his health. Uh, as far as we know, there was nothing negative about his character as a father or his actions. So we see three fathers that were presented as men of God and who honored God and who was a, an example, a good example to his uh, children. Now I'd like to look at three other types of biblical fathers. The first one is Abraham. Abraham as a father. We know that Abraham loved God and we know that he believed the promises of God. But as a father, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a little different story uh, as a father. So his strength as a father, he wanted to follow God and he taught his children about Jehovah, uh, the God that he knew, so that was the right thing to do. Uh, eventually, Abraham learned to rely on God completely and to trust and obey him completely. And so I like that because it shows that all of us, fathers and mothers and people, we, are, we, we start out struggling with maybe our faith or struggling with our walk with God, struggling with our understanding of who God is, but we can grow in that and we can become more mature and more faith uh, strong. And that's encouraging. The other strength that he had was he provided well for his family. He was a rich man and he provided well for them. As I see it, this is Abraham's weakness. Abraham tended to rely on his own understanding and learned and leaned on the law of the land instead of seeking God's guidance. And you'll remember that happened several times once when he had was he, he was promised a son and he listened to his wife and she talked him into taking uh, Hagar as a, as a um, servant who would bear a child in Sarah's, for Sarah. But that wasn't what God had said. He said, you will have a child of Sarah. And so uh, Abraham did not check that out with God. He relied on the law because the law allowed him legally to do that. But instead of seeking God and, and checking that out with the Lord, he relied on the law. So I see that as his weakest, uh, as his weakness as a father. He should have checked those things out with God. And that's a lesson for us because it's so easy to assume a lot and, and uh, to just go on our own, rely on our own understanding rather than trusting God. And the next one I'm going to share with you, and I'm not going to do three, I'm just going to do two for time's sake. 
And that is King David as a father. And you find that in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 1 and 1 Kings chapter 18. You would think because David was a man who loved God, he kind of was up and down in his relationship with God it seems, but he loved to worship God and he often was seen in the temple offering sacrifices and worshiping God. Uh, that, that made him a good father or a great father. I believe he was a good father, but I certainly don't think he was a great father. His strengths were that he worshipped only one God, Jehovah. He did not uh, worship idols. He worshipped only Jehovah God. Secondly, he was a famous warrior and he protected his children and he fought for his country and he provided well for his family as well. He was teachable and humble. When confronted about his sin, he didn't die, try to get out of it, he didn't try to cover it up, well he did before that, but once he was confronted, he was quick to repent and to turn back to God. And uh, David had some noble character in him as before he became king, we can see that, but as a father, he had several weaknesses. His greatest weakness was beautiful women. He had more than one wife, which caused a lot of problems in his home and among his family, and uh, actually led to sin in his life, adultery and murder. Uh, he was not only good, uh, a good, he was not a good example to his children in this area of his life. Uh, although God allowed David to have more than one wife, it was not God's best choice for his children. And here we see that uh, David abused his position of authority as king to which, and, and basically sought for to get whatever he wanted, uh, which was many wives and concubines. This indulgence led, as I said, to much heartache within his family jealousies, anger, um, some of his own children turned against him. He was unable, number three, his, his third weakness, he was unable to confront the sexual abuse in his own household among his children because of his own sexual weaknesses and sin of adultery. This led to more heartache among his children. It led to disrespect and resentment and for some rebellion. So David was, uh, was a great leader and a great king, but he had some issues regarding himself as a father. And uh, I just want to talk for a few minutes about the lessons that we learn from these three and the, the uh, other one that I was going to do was Isaac as a father. Uh, but due to time I'm, I'm going to uh, let you study Isaac on your own. So what lessons can we learn from these fathers? Uh, one thing is the necessity to uh, be a follower of Christ and to, and to uh, honor him and obey him. We can learn that lesson. Um, and the other thing I think is really important is that it's never too late. You say, well, I'm a, I'm a grandfather. My children are all grown up. And uh, that's true. But, uh, you know, if we will take David's example and humble ourselves and seek for God's forgiveness where we see we failed as a father, um, and even if your children are grown up, sometime have a talk with them. Humble yourself because God says he loves a, a broken and contrite spirit. And that's humil humility, to recognize that uh, you made mistakes and that you failed your children. It's never too late to go back and say, I am sorry for this or I'm sorry for that. So humble yourself and, and uh, God will bring healing to your family and to your children. Uh, other, other times we may have to live with the consequences of our sin and weaknesses. But, as I said, if we repent and continue to seek God and we pray for our children who have been affected, uh, God can bring healing. And uh, 
he can also bring reconciliation to himself if your children are, are not converted. Um, as a father, what would your children say is your greatest strength and your greatest weakness? I'm very thankful I had a chance to talk to my father before he passed away. And uh, it was very helpful for some reconciliation in my life to my father. Uh, my father's strengths were he took time out for his out of his busy life to play with us, and we really loved that. Uh, he taught us a great work ethics. It's, it was always work before play, and he really loved us. He loved us as his children. But my father's weaknesses were first of all he was not a Christian, and he did not live a godly example for us to follow. My dad was judgmental and would falsely accuse us of things. Uh, and he was authoritarian. It was his way or the only way. So that was his weakness. And I remember once when the, my father had bought my sister and I brand new bikes. And uh, we hardly ever had anything new or big like that because we were so poor. And my father really um, was uh, wonderful to, to buy that for us. But anyway, we had neighbor kids who would come over and take our bikes if they were laying in the yard. They'd just come over and take them. And I saw what they did to my sister's bike. It was, they actually wrecked it. They bent the wheel. They were coming down a, a road too fast. They weren't taking care of it. And uh, they had an accident. It bent the wheel. It knocked out some of the spokes. So when I saw that they, how they had treated my sister's bike, I thought to myself, I'm going to really, they're not going to take mine whenever they like, if they're going to be careless like that. And so I would hide it in the woodshed, and so that they could, when we went to church on Sunday, so that they couldn't get it. And uh, one day when I came home from church, uh, I let them, excuse me, I want to just say this, I did let them ride it. If I was there, I would let them take it for a ride, and, uh, and, and they were more careful when I was there, they were kind of watching. And so um, one day, Sunday I came home from church and, and they were riding my bike without my permission. And I blew a gasket. I should not have done that, that's true. But I was very angry at them. So when I got out of the car I just lit right into them telling them that you have no right to ride my bike. I didn't have to tell you that you could. You didn't ask if it was okay and stuff like that. And all of a sudden my father stopped me and he said, and he started, um, embarrassing me in front of the other girls and telling me they could come over anytime they wanted, they could ride it anytime they wanted. And I spoke to my dad very um, plainly and I said, okay, then you can give it to them because I don't want it. If I can't take care of my bike, then I don't want it. And then my dad spoke to me and threatened to um, whip me if I didn't shut up. That was a very painful time for me and it took me years to get over it and to forgive my dad. I forgave my dad uh, sooner than what I, than now, but when I was a young person and realized I needed to forgive him for doing that. But the effects of that uh, had a long lasting effect on my life. So sometimes as parents we make mistakes, we fail, we judge something when it's wrong or, or we're judging the motive and we really don't know the motive. So. The one good thing about that is, is that God does bring forgiveness. And he forgives us, he forgave me for my response to my dad, and he gave me grace to forgive my dad. So I pray that the Lord will bless you through this and that you will have learned um, the importance of humbling ourselves before God, asking his forgiveness, and, and maybe going to our children and communicating with them about things that may they may have hurt them in their, in their childhood and bringing reconciliation because, because God loves reconciliation. So God bless you, fathers, and I hope this is encouraging to you. This is a song I would like to sing uh, to the fathers on Father's Day. <clears throat> Some people have sung this song um, as a tribute to fathers, but it's actually about our Heavenly Father. So. It has a value in both ways. When I am down and all oh, my soul. 
so weary when troubles come and my heart burden be then I am still and wait here in the silence until you Sometimes I think I glimpse